Hey guys, and welcome to episode 8 of Bucket for Beginners, where I'm going to go over how to do your first command. But first, I need to go over the homework stuff. And I just so you guys know, I decided to stop doing the uh, homework testing thing because I figure I'm doing that so that you can um, you can like test this stuff out and have an example to try. Um, but I figure I gave you guys my Skype, so if you have any questions, you can just call and ask me. Um, you can t you can email me and ask me. You can call me on the phone. I don't care. Um, so I figure I'm not going to waste the video time and stuff going over those. So I'll do this last one um, so you know, but after this, that is it. Unless I get a ridiculous rush of people saying, oh my god, Apple, I can't live without you doing homework. So I don't know. We'll see. So it was a public method. It returned a boolean. It was called get booleans. It had a string named string1 and an integer named um, cool number it was and I said initialize a new boolean array so we'll call this my boolean array and we're gonna create a new boolean array with the size of 2 and I said if the length of string1 was greater than 10 so this comes back as an integer so you can say if whatever this integer is is greater than 10 which is another integer um, then set the first element of my boolean array to true now this 2 means that it has a size of 2 so you can access it through um, my boolean array or 0 which is the first element and 1 which is the second I know it's kind of confusing but so the first element we're going to set to true and then if it's not, we're gonna set the first element or yeah, the first element to false. Then I said if cool number is what did I say? Oh, if it's greater than one hundred, then set the second element to true. If it's not, so else. Set it to false. And then at the very end, we're going to return the array. And that is it. So, there you go. Um, it's pretty self explanatory. If you have any questions about this, just message me. So, we will get rid of this and go jump right into our on command method. So, Remember how I said how Java plugin calls this class, Java plugin calls these two methods when the plugin is enabled and disabled. See how when I click on Java plugin, it like highlights these two? Well, because that means it um it corresponds to this class. There's a nice thing that Eclipse does. So the same thing happens on the on command method. So that what this is, it's a it's a public boolean and it's called on command. And it gives you four things. It gives you a command sender. Remember I said this before, how the command sender can be the console or it can be a player. And you have to cast it to a player to actually use it like as a player. Um, if you didn't watch the video on casting and booleans, you need to watch that to understand what's about to happen because it's going to help you a ton. So we'll call this the sender. And we're going to have a command object. We're going to have a string. I'll explain what those what these are in a second. Um, we'll call this the command label. And then let me explain this quick. So if we have a command teleport apple juice to John, the command is going to be this teleport. It's going to be this right here. But it's going to, it's going to come back to you as a command object. Because the command class has a bunch of different methods in it, like uh, command you can get the permission for that command you can get um, you can set a few things too. you can set the permission you can uh, what else can you do here you can set the description of the command you can set the aliases so like if you have a slash nation command you can do slash n and you can put as many aliases as you, as you want so that's for doing things with the actual command if you want to just test to see what this is that's what 
this string here is for, the command label. The command label is just this first part as a string. Anything after that is going to be stored as a string array called args. Now you could call these whatever you want. You can call this ponies, turtles, chicken soup, and basketball if you wanted to, but this kind of keeps it like self-explanatory and easy. So the reason this returns a boolean, let me just import these two real fast. Import and import bucket. Now if you had, um, let's say for in the array list, I'll explain array list later on. This basically is a list of things. Let's say you have an array list of, <coughs> excuse me, of strings called names. We're going to make a new array list of strings. Now with this, let me import this, control shift O to import all your junk. You can add stuff to this array list, right? Now you can also remove stuff. So if you want to remove an object, where the object in this case would be the string, if you wanted to remove an object, did you notice, oh I didn't even point it out, did you see how this returns a boolean right here? Because it's going to return to you whether or not it actually was able to take it out. If you have three names in here, you have John, Bob, and Joe, and you try to remove apple juice, it's going to return false because it couldn't. It couldn't remove apple juice. So why would you want to do this? Let's say you have a, um, you can put this in an if statement. You can say if names, and you can see if this is equal to true. I know that's kind of confusing because it's like an if statement calling a method, but this is still going to call this method and it's going to get whatever it returns. So that's how you would use that. The same thing happens for the on command method, which is called when, whenever a player types a command. Um, it's going to return true if they typed the command correctly, and it's going to return false if they did not type it correctly. Now, what you can do, you can add like a check in here to see if it returns false it'll send them an error message but what I like to do is I like to test um, all the way through with if statements to see if they type it correctly because then you can give it an else and then you can print out a message saying how they should type it in and you can like guide them along to show them the exact right way to type the command so what I generally do is I just return true I bring this to the bottom and I take care of everything myself because I'm a hands-on kind of guy. So I'm not going to go into a lot of like the um, like the teleporting and stuff. I'm going to I was going to go over classes and objects and constructors next video, but I decided that um, I figured I went over a lot of Java stuff these first um, seven or eight videos, and you guys want to see bucket stuff. So I'm going to go spend the next few videos doing all bucket stuff like teleporting. Um, stuff with players like health and, f and hunger, killing players, all that good stuff. So uh, when this command method is called, you want to see what the command they typed was, obviously, because if you just put nothing here, it's going to enter this method. It's going to give you all these things, like the args that they type. It's going to give you the command label, the actual command, and it's going to tell you who sent it. If you put nothing here, it's going to return true, and that's the end of the method. So we want to say if the command label, we'll make our command turtles. Now remember if you're accessing a string and you want to compare it, you have to use dot equals. You can't do the double equal sign. So we're going to say if it equals and we're going to ignore the case, which means it can be capital or lowercase, of the string. And we'll say if it equals turtles. If it does, we're going to uh, we're going to create a player object. We'll call this the player, and we're going to set this to the value of the sender because the sender is the per the person or the thing because it could be a console um, that sent the message. So, but we want to cast this to a player so that we know that the sender is in fact a player, and we can use it as a player. Because if you if you try to just get the sender, and let's say you try to set its health, there is no set health method, because you can't set health to a console. But we can do the player set health, and there we go. We have all these methods because they're in the player class. Because the the sender is now a player. So 
well, if it equals turtles, we're just going to send him a message saying you type turtles. And white is boring. Um, I mean, I know I'm white, but the color is boring. So we're going to say we're going to do chat color. Now, this is a class. This is a chat color class that Bucket has. And this has a bunch of constants that have all the different chat colors in it. So uh, we'll make this green. And now, the reason that this is bad, or this is showing up as an error, is because you need to concatenate this. You need to combine this. Just like we combined the strings before, this is basically going to come back as a string. It's going to come back as one of those and symbols. And I think green is A. So it's going to come back as that. And you want to combine that with this message. And it, like anything after that, like if we typed, um, and ponies. This would show up as green too, because anything after this is green. If you wanted to make this a different color, you would have to. We'll make this gold, and concatenate that as well. So this is green, and then, oops, and then this is gold. So let's. Oh, we have to add this to our plugin YML. So in your plugin YML. Go uh, make a new field called commands. Do two spaces, and then type the name of the command that you want to register. So in this case, it's turtles. Two spaces, and we're going to give it a description. What the description is is when someone types slash help and then your plugin name, it's going to show a list of all your commands. And if you don't put anything in the description, it's going to show the turtles command, and then it's just going to say null which is kind of boring. So we're going to say uh, my cool command. And that is it. We can get rid of some of this space here, make it a little prettier. So we're going to save this. We're going to export it. Export, do our triple enter, boom, boom, boom. Oh, it's saying there's, because I didn't use the array list import. So don't need that. Doesn't matter though going to go into my server we're going to reload and so our command is turtles you type turtles with a big fat happy face in green and then and ponies in gold and that is the basis for commands um, I'm gonna go over really fast the uh, the arguments so you can type like we'll say turtles soup well simple like that'll send a different message so you can disconnect I'm gonna go into here so we're gonna say if args zero equals and we're gonna ignore the case if it equals soup Then we're, then we're going to send him a different message, but if I'm not sure if you picked up on this, but what happens if they just type turtles? Because it's going to go into here, it's going to say if it equals turtles, then it's going to try to access the args array. But if they didn't type anything besides turtles, th there's not going to be an args array, it's going to be null. And you're going to get a null pointer exception because you're going to try to access this string when there's nothing there. So we need to add a check first to see if the length of args is equal to one because we want there to be one argument. So there's turtles, which is the command label, that's a separate thing, and then anything after that is the args. So we want there to be one thing, just soup. So we're gonna open this up. Control I or Control A and then I to fix your indentation. Or control A and then control I. So if the length is equal to one, if it's equal to soup Send him. Oh, we have to define this player all the way at the top so we can use him. So we're gonna send him a message. Oh, it's called the player. I'm sorry, the player. Send message. You type soup, and we'll send this as blue. So, if the command is turtle, oops, whoa, if the command is turtles, 
we're going to cast the center to a player if the length of the arguments is 1 and if the first argument is equal to soup send blue or send you type soup in blue now if the length of args is not equal to 1 so we're going to give this an else then send you just type turtles and we'll get rid of ponies because they, they just type turtles so let's save that export it and here reload turtles oops turtles you type turtles yay turtles soup you type soup now you can use this for all different kinds of commands you could do a teleport apple juice that guy oh it doesn't know it um, and then you can just get the you can get the person that they type in the next in the next arguments and you can add as many as you want you can have infinite amount of arguments well as many as you can fit inside of a message I suppose so that is about it for commands if you guys have any questions on this um, please send me a message on YouTube Skype email phone I, I don't care anything and I'll respond um, because this is like the basis of your of the stuff the commands and listeners are basically the um, the basis of bucket so and I'll go over listeners down the road that's a little bit more advanced but it's, it's not too difficult trust me so hope that helps a little bit with commands I'm gonna go over teleportation and locations in the next video so stay tuned thanks for watching guys